In this video, I will show you step-by-step -step tutorial on how to download, install and how to use the latest version of AnyDesk. AnyDesk is used legitimately by millions of people worldwide, to remotely connect to other computers for troubleshooting, file sharing and even presentations. Let's begin. First is we will download the AnyDesk disk image file. Open your web browser. Search for AnyDesk download for Mac. Choose the first option which is from their official website AnyDesk.com. We will be redirected to the download page. Remote Desktop Software for Mac OS. We have the option to download the file. During the time of this recording the latest version available is version 9.0.0 and the file size is 15.3 megabytes. If we scroll down below, we can see that Mac OS is currently selected. We also have the version for Windows if you want to install on your Windows operating system. Also the version for Android, iOS, Apple TV, Linux, etc. Again, choose the Mac OS. Now, click download to proceed. Another window will pop up. We can rename the file name anything we want. Also, we can change the download storage path. I just leave it all to default. Tick save to proceed. The file has been downloaded. The file name is anydesk.dmg. We can now open the download folder or we can click the show in finder and we will be redirected to the download folder. Let's now install the application. Double click on it to open. Another window will pop up. Double click on the AnyDesk icon to proceed. A window will pop up, tick open to proceed. You will be asked if you want to allow this application to find devices on local network. This will automatically discover other devices on the same network. Click allow. Let's minimize first those other windows. AnyDesk status is not yet installed. Tick install to proceed. This option will gather logs for bugs and application errors. You can leave it unchecked. Tick accept and install to proceed. Verify the process by entering your password. This process is very important. Do not close the window. We need to grant AnyDesk the required permissions for complete remote access functionality. First is the screen recording. We need to grant this app to use the screen recording. We can see it's denied. Second is accessibility. This will allow remote users to control your mouse and keyboard. We can see it's also denied. And the last one is full disk access. We need to grant access to files and folders for file transfer, which is also being denied. We will grant permissions. For the screen recording, tick on Open Screen Recording Preferences. Notice that AnyDesk has been disabled. If you don't see the AnyDesk then tick the plus sign. Enter your password. Locate the AnyDesk then tick open. Simply tick on it to enable or grant access. The application needs to restart, we will do this later. Let's close the window. The status is pending. We will refresh this option. It's been changed to granted. Next is the accessibility. We will do the same process. Tick on request accessibility. Enable the AnyDesk. Enter your password. Now, close the window. The status change to granted. Lastly, the full disk access. Click on open full disk access preferences. Enable the AnyDesk also. Enter your password again. Choose later. Close the window. If the status still pending then tick refresh. We have now granted AnyDesk the required permissions. Close the window. We have now successfully installed the AnyDesk application. If we look at the AnyDesk status, it says that it's up to date. Now, if we expand the window, notice that one device has been discovered. This is because we enabled this feature earlier. This device also has AnyDesk installed. At the top, you can see the address. This is like your home address. You can share this address to anyone you want a remote access to your computer. Each device has unique address. To copy the address, you can right-click on it then choose copy address. You can now send it to anyone you want. 
Every time someone wants to connect or to access your computer using the address then you need to accept their request. Alternatively, we can enable the unattended access. We will create a password. So once you provided them the address and the password then no need for you to accept their request, they will be granted to access your device automatically. We can create a password by clicking on the padlock icon or go to the general tab at the top. Choose set password. Enter your computer password. Now, we need to enter the AnyDesk unattended password. Make sure to create a strong password. Combination of lowercase and uppercase, special characters and numbers. Confirm your password. Tick change password to proceed. We will be redirected to the permission profile. We can use or create a different profile but it's also the same, only depends on the permissions we enable and disable. These are all the permissions that the remote users with the AnyDesk address and password can and cannot do. We will use this unattended access profile. You can review these permissions one by one. You can see that unattended access has been enabled. I usually disable this here my device's sound. I don't want the remote users to hear me talking or what's happening on my background. You can leave it enabled if you want. Control my device must be also enabled for them to remotely control your computer. Remote users also can restart the device or your computer. You can enable the privacy mode if you don't want to see what they're doing on your computer. You can go through it one by one or else leave it to default settings. Again, this are all based on your preference. You can leave it to default settings if you want. Close the window and the changes will be saved. You can now share the AnyDesk ID alongside with the AnyDesk password. They can remote access your computer anytime, anywhere as long as this device or computer is online or connected to the internet. We can also configure the alias. Instead of giving the AnyDesk address then you can give the alias ID. Alias is you can easily remember instead of the default address which is in numbers. To do this, go to General tab. Choose Settings. If you go to Identity, Alias is grayed out. For older versions of AnyDesk, you can change it from here even without an account. But for the latest release, we need to have an account and sign it to it then only we can change the alias. Now, go to My Account tab. We will sign up for an account. It's free and it's very fast and easy. You just need to use a valid email address because you will receive the activation link from there. If you already have an AnyDesk account then you can log in from here. If you don't have an account then choose register an account. Choose how you want to use AnyDesk. For personal use, I suggest you choose support family and friends. Enter your first name and last name. Again, enter a valid email address. Enter an account password. Verify the password. I don't want to sign up to marketing email so I will leave it unchecked. I tick the box to agree with the terms and conditions. Tick register an account to proceed. We need to verify the email address. An email has been sent to verify your mail address. Please check your email. I'll open my browser to check my email. If you did not receive this email from AnyDesk then go back to the AnyDesk window. Choose click here to request a resend. Go back to the email and refresh the page. If you still haven't received the email then check your junk mail or spam folder. Open the email. Please click here to verify your account. Click on click here. We will be redirected to the verification process. Tick on click here to proceed. Your account has been updated. You can tick back to application and you will be redirected to the login page. Now, go back to the AnyDesk application. Click on return to login. We are still on my account tab. We will enter the email address and password we use to create an account. Tick login to proceed. We are now logged into AnyDesk. You can see your account details from here. This is a free license. Now, go back to identity. We can now set the alias. Tick choose alias. Enter your preferred alias. It will show already assigned if not available. Special characters are not allowed but we can add numbers. Once you see it's available then we can use that alias. Choose register to proceed. The alias has been registered. Take note that you need to add alias sign plus ad behind the created alias. 
you cannot use the alias only. Tick close to proceed. Now, close the window. Notice that the alias has been displayed at the bottom of the AnyDesk address. We can use both but of course, you can easily remember the alias rather than the 10 digits. We can also resize the window manually by hovering our cursor to the edge then drag it where we want. And of course, we can use the minimize and maximize option. On the home window we can see here the AnyDesk status. The favorites, recent sessions, and discovered. I will show you this features later on. Now, we try to connect to different computer using AnyDesk. On the top of the screen, you can see the address bar. We will enter the AnyDesk address or the alias address provided by the remote user or the computer we are trying to access. Here is the alias and again, always enter the alias sign plus AD. Hit enter to proceed or you can click on the connect icon. Authorization window will pop up. If you don't know the password or the password haven't configured then you need to wait for them to accept your remote request. We also have the option to chat with the remote user. Both user can chat together even if not yet connected. We can minimize or close the chat box. We can enter the password of the remote site. Tick the eye icon to verify the password. We can also enable login automatically from now on. This is very useful, we don't need to enter the password every time we try to connect. Click OK to proceed. We can now access the remote device. We can see here the details. This is the address of the remote user or the person who is accessing the device. The time duration how long the user is connected. We can also see here the permissions granted for the remote user. We can now fully control this device. At the top of the screen, we can see the monitor logo. We can change the display settings from here. We can test this options. We can simply tick on it option to apply the display settings. Full screen is also available. You can check these other features if you want. Beside is the chat option. Tick on it and the chat box will appear. Next is the actions. For this latest versions, a lot of features has been disabled. We only have the option to take screenshot. Just tick on it and the screenshot will be automatically saved on the desktop. If we open the file, it's exactly the same with the remote device display. We can also check the permissions from here. We have the full permissions because I just used the default permissions on this computer. You can also modify here if you want. The recording is not available also on this version. You need to have a license to use the full features. I will show you another way later on. Next is the whiteboard. This option is very useful during presentation or when you want to capture screenshots. A lot of options you can do to present and then once you click the X or close, everything will disappear. To end the remote session, you can simply click the X beside the address bar or you can directly close the AnyDesk and you will be disconnected. Let's open the AnyDesk again. Since we accessed this device earlier then we will see it on recent sessions. At the bottom right, you can see the four dots icon, tick on it and we have some few options available. We can choose connect and we will be redirectly connected. This is because we entered the password and we remembered the password earlier. Next is the browse files, here is another way to transfer files to the remote device. The left is our device and the right is the remote device. At the left, choose the file you want to transfer. At the right, choose where you want to save the file. In my case I want to save it on desktop. You can now drag the file from left to right or you can tick upload at the top. It's now transferring the file. If the status if finished then we can now see the file on the remote computer. We can see here the transferred file. VPN is not supported. Next is that we can add this device to favorites. Once we tick add favorites then it will be available on the favorites tab. We can identify that it was selected as favorites by looking at the star. Alternatively, we can tick the star to remove from favorites. We can tick it again to add from favorites. We can go to favorites tab to view all the devices marked as favorites. Another option is we can create a shortcut on desktop for this device. Notice the desktop shortcut automatically created on desktop. Once you want to connect to this device, no need for you to open the AnyDesk every time, you can simply click on the shortcut icon on desktop. 
Next is the chat history, if in case you want to check your previous chat history then you can check it here. We can also rename the device display name here to replace the AnyDesk alias ID. If you don't want to see this device then you can remove it from here. On the top right, we can change the view settings. The default is big tiles. We can change it to small tiles. We also have the option to change to list. I personally prefer the default one or the big tiles. Next is we will change the language. Go to general. Choose settings. Under general tab. You can see here the language. You can choose what language you prefer. Under screenshot path, you can change the path if you want. Choose custom and locate the folder path you want to save the screenshots. Click OK to proceed. Same with the chat log. You can disable the logs or you can customize where you want to save the chat log files. You can check the other features if you want. At the bottom, about any desk. You can see here the application details. We are using the free license which is for one device only. The AnyDesk version. You can also change the license key from here if you have one. To uninstall AnyDesk. Close the application. Now, go to Finder. Choose Applications. You can see here the AnyDesk application. You can simply right click on it then choose Move to Trash. You can also drag this icon to the trash. We received an error that the item can't be moved to the trash because it's open. We must close it on the dock as well. Let's drag it one more time. Success. You can empty the trash to completely uninstall the AnyDesk application. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.